I'm in Dubai and I'm at Gulf Food and I'm on the Alara stand with Alex Smith. Um, Alex, before we begin to talk about a product that, or, or an ingredient that's caught my eye, can you tell me a little bit of the history of your business? I was a squatter in the centre of London and as a reaction against the big property developing companies that were vandalising buildings there, I decided to live without using any money. The lady I was living with at the time, after a year of living without any money at all, got a bit fed up with it. I'm still a little bit uncertain why she got fed up with it. So we decided to start using money again. The very next morning, as it happened, I found two pound notes in the street and we started the business with the two pound notes I found in the street. Okay, um, you, you seem to have covered a lot of ground since then. <laughs> um, we're, we're looking at Alara is the company, but you've got various brands here. Um, and, and again, before we get onto the ingredient that caught my attention, do you want to explain the, the, the range of products that you've got on the stand? Uh, what we are as a company is we specialize really in three niches. So for instance, we were the very first cereal company in the world to make certified organic products. We were the very first cereal company in the world to make certified fair trade products. We were the very first company to be licensed by the Celiac Society for Free From. So Alara was first, Asda was second. So we've got a series of global firsts. Wow. We now have as our mission to be the most sustainable food manufacturer on earth. We thought we'd go for the big one after that. But we are a food manufacturer, so we, we have a series of brands that we produce ourselves but then we do own label for you know a lot of multiple retailers and brand owners so what you see from our own brand is probably about 20 percent of our own production okay well now let's move on specifically to something i've never heard of before i'm sure many of our readers or listeners will have done but it's yakon um you describe it as guilt-free sweetness can you explain that the history of yakon and how it can be used yakon is one of the lost crops of the incas you know, um, quinoa is one of the, the best known of those lost crops. There's also maca. It's you know, so these three yakon, maca, and quinoa, uh, three lost crops of the Incas that I really like. The thing about yakon is that it was banned in the EU. So, Alara, we spent you know tens of thousands of pounds and had PhD research putting in a very comprehensive dossier to the European Food Standards Agency to get it approved not as a novel food anymore. So it came off the novel food list in Europe about 10 months ago. And what really excites us about Yakon is that out of all of the crops in the world, it's the crop which have, has got the highest levels of fructooligosaccharides, which are very special sugars that taste sweet but the human body isn't adapted to absorb them. So you know, if you think of all of the sugars like sucrose, glucose, fructose, lactose, it, they all taste sweet, but they're all absorbed by the body. You know, some like fructose slowly, but fructooligosaccharides aren't absorbed by the body at all. So you know, if you're looking for part of the answer to the obesity problem, then products that satisfy people's desire for sweet food but that sweetness isn't laid down by the liver as fat so you know for that purpose I think fructooligosaccharides are a, a perfect solution which is why we've been championing Yakon for you know, such a long time and put such a lot of commitment into it. Right it sounds like something we're going to hear a lot more about what's been the reaction here at Gulf Food? As, to the event, to, to the products. as people understand what Yakon is, then they really start to understand the potential of it. You know, it, it can be used as a syrup, as a powder, as a flake. So it has pretty good universal usages. It's also, we've, we've done a test crop in Wiltshire. It's a very, very good cover crop. It's a bit frost sensitive, but it's got, you know, in the same way, potatoes started in Peru and now they're grown all over the world everywhere. I'd say Yakon has that same potential. You know, to be grown you know, in a lot of countries. It's a new crop for farmers. It's a very good cover crop. The yields can be quite astounding. You can get 20 kilos of tubers just from one plant. And 
you know, it's one that certainly we want to really champion and promote. Okay, um, really interesting. Thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you very much.